1998 Nissan R34 GTT coilover install. This list will be repeated again later. Um, basically, Nissan stuff, you're going to need your 10mm, uh, 12mm, 14mm, stuff like that. Uh, pry bar, measuring tape, and a few other interesting tools in between. Uh, again, that list will be posted again, so you could pause it when it comes back up. But uh, yeah, first things first, you could do this in whatever step you want to here. You're going to want to remove the back seat. Of course, pay homage to that guy. Um, T-A-K-E underscore E-R-34, I think is his Instagram. There's a car thief right there. Yeah, so these are 12 millimeter in the back. In a minute, you'll see me try to put a 10 millimeter on there. There's one on each side. The reason why we take the seat out is to access the top here because that's where the rear coilover sits. The only way to get at it is past the rear deck. So here we are, toolbox. The list of tools is going to come up again. Um, you're also going to need a lot of WD-40. So here's that list. Nineteen millimeter as well. Uh, Twenty-one millimeter, specific to the uh, lug nuts that were on my car. I don't know if yours is going to be the same. Probably. Impacts impact sockets would be nice. You might even need them for removing bushings, as I ended up. Um, if you have an impact driver, use that as well. So yeah, here I am attempting a ten millimeter, realizing that I'm a bit of an idiot. <clears throat> Swapping it out. 12. Didn't really need to extend this video right here to show all this, but 12 millimeter. This is on the right hand side, the driver's side in this case. Right hand drive car. That side's loose. There's my mother giving me the finger in the window, but I had to remove the skeleton out of the passenger seat. I didn't notice my mom doing that until after. So get in the back, remove all the crap out of the way, and 12 millimeter again. I'm not going to show this though. Okay, after the 12s are out, I usually like to put the bolts back in the same spot that I got them, so I'll lift it up, put them in there. You want to stuff the seatbelts through, stuff them through to the other side, then start reefing on this thing. You might get lucky and find some money, like I did. It's going to go directly towards lotto tickets or, or beer, one of the two. There's actually uh, quite a bit of change, all things considered. Never seen that much change in the back of a vehicle. So, yeah, on both sides even. Yeah, It's my lucky day. Um, yeah, so then... It's just a matter of prying up both sides, left and right of this. And if you have any other extra seat belt, you got to push it through and kind of just chuck that off to the side. Then that exposes the 10 millimeters. Now there's two of these, one on the left-hand side, and you'll see in a second one on the right. I'm going to end up taking those out, and the seat pops up afterward. Um, here I am pretending to know what I'm doing. <laughs> rounding it off a little um, anyways got them off that's what it looks like you know if you've never seen a bolt before uh, you want to slide the seatbelt out as you can see this one's out already this side isn't and yeah it's pretty simple just I'm pretty sure you could figure that out here I am reefing on it it's not all that difficult to get out you just got to pull it up and then push the seat belts to the side of it yeah and then it uh it should come out and then you throw it over with the other one um there's my awesome inspired shirt that i wear all the time now inspired engineering there i am putting the 10 millimeters back where i found them so i don't lose them it's just a good good habit to get into, especially when you're working on the lawn, like I am. 
there's the tabs. That's what the seat sits into. And, uh, and there's the seatbelt mechanism back there and a little foam pad. Now this is where the top of the coilovers are. Um, there's two 12 millimeter uh, nuts that are on the top. And it's going to be a nightmare to get in there. The angle and everything, you can get a socket on the, the inside one, the outside. It gets in the way of the seatbelt mechanism. Uh, this hose, by the way, if you're wondering, is just for the uh, windshield washer fluid that goes to the back window. The sprayer right there. I figured I'd point that out. So here we are on the back. I probably have the tops of the coilovers loose at this point. I'm just basically showing how I jack things up. I use contingency, lots of wood, lots of, uh, yeah, the jack still stays underneath the car. I just don't want the thing falling on me. Safety is a uh, priority. Here's what the bottom of the coilover looks like. GTT has a fork style rear coilover. Just make special note of that. In Juca Racing, when they got the coilovers for me, didn't know what to start. So yeah, uh, to take the wheel off, it's 21 millimeter. Here's a shot of everything being hit by WD-40. It doesn't hurt to hit everything with WD-40 once in a while. I'm going to be taking all that stuff off eventually. There's the rear Hikus assembly. That is also coming out in this video. So there's what the 17 millimeter bolt on the bottom of the coilover looks like. It's not too hard. You just double wrench it, you know, reef on it a bit. Here's the, uh, going into a little bit better explanation of the left hand side, or sorry, the right hand side of the car. And a bit of a fail in engineering that, uh, you know, you try to fit wrenches and sockets in there and it's not going to want to work around. I imagine you could probably take the back deck off and that seatbelt assembly out of there, but I didn't. I just wrestled with it. I managed to get it out without rounding the, the bolt or without rounding the nut. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of awesome tools. Well, yeah, like you can see there. So that worked. Um, there's the top. You'll want to reuse that. Now the, the backs, we got a 17 and a 12 millimeter for that back arm where the hikus is in goes. There it is removed. 12 on one side, 17 on the other. Now this is a nightmare to pull off. I honestly, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I tried for three days messing around with this stupid thing. Um, eventually cut it and then had to use some tools to push the the thing out. Now I have actually kind of got that one on backwards here. There's, there's my boys. And uh, I ended up pushing the center out first and then had to make up my own tool. As you can see here, made up this tool and it, it worked to, to take it out, but it, it took a while. Constantly adjusting and maneuvering. I decided to include this just to show you that you can be innovative and make stuff if you have access to some tools and stuff like that. You want to use the right size collar and whatnot. It, it did eventually come out. That was the hard one. The other one on the other side only took five minutes to get out, which uh, this one though was annoying. There's the other side. Like I quite literally just set it up like that, 17 millimeter, and it just pushed out. So pretty happy with that side it was just so much easier those collars i got from princess auto here in canada it's like seven bucks a little bit expensive here i am installing the new bushing um that's pretty easy going there there i am finishing it off um now here i am going to show you what the rear coilover how to install you put it on the hub if you look here like this is normally a two-person job but if you can get you can figure it out to do it by yourself if you have to you just set it on the hub there and you can get your two top 12 millimeters in and then turn that 90 degrees and jack it up and jack up underneath the hub there and then put the bolt in and now to jack there be right pretty much where I've circled in this diagram jack underneath there, push it up, and then you can uh, put the bolt through. 17 millimeter again, both sides. 
here's the uh, rear control arm rear coil over end control arm installed the control arms that from gk tech are 19 millimeter they are a little bit beefier i really like them so far and the, yeah i really hated that bushing now onto the fronts. Front coilovers are so much easier to install in my opinion. Uh, you got your brake cable, you got two 14 millimeters on the top. All you have to worry about is that bushing on the bottom. Um, it has to be facing a certain way. The uh, little metal bushing goes towards the back. Goes towards the back of the car. And your, bra your brake bracket will have to turn around so that requires an allen key of some, of some sorts. So again 17 millimeter on the bottom. And two 14s on the top you'll see I'll mess around with that here in a second again spray everything with WD-40 makes it so much easier I don't think I sprayed the top with WD-40 but they weren't bad and yeah if you have an impact driver too it kind of helps speed up some of this process. Um, obviously, you don't want to accidentally cross it or cross it at anything and cause any problems, but you know, that comes with experience and taking your time. So, here I am installing, I guess, the rear of the bottom. I loosened it off enough to give it some maneuverability. Now it's just a matter of finding, uh, I believe, I'm looking for my 17 millimeter. Once I find my 17 millimeter, <laughs> I end up uh, threading it on by hand, and then I end up uh, going at it with a with a ratchet. Those you'll want to torque down a little bit more. I think they're supposed to be upwards of like 100, 100 plus foot pounds. That's a little bit more of a priority as the bottom of the suspension. Again, making sure that it seats in there. It only does fit in the one way. If you put, try to put it in backwards, which I ended up doing the one time, it you'll see that it doesn't want to doesn't want to connect. Also, with the coilover wrenches and whatnot, you'll want to make sure everything's tightened down before you go about finally torquing everything. As you can see, I have one of my rings isn't all the way down. I left it for some adjustability. But before lowering the car and everything, I put them down, torqued them up, just so it, uh, it'd it be good to go. Pretty straightforward. The only thing you have to really look out for is the direction of the coilovers and getting that brake, bra that brake bracket on. Um, that's a 10 millimeter stock from the factory but the bc coilovers after you remove the 10 millimeter you're not going to use it again you're going to end up threading through with your uh, hex and here it is on the other side here so let's see cleaning up the threads in that 10 millimeter i, I decided to clean the threads before removing the bottom nut off of the assembly there because i didn't want to get any junk on the on the threads it was a little bit dirty, this car. Um, 10 millimeter there, as you can see, bottom 17 is off right at the moment. Coilover pushes off the front. Two 14s in the top are already off. There's the other coilover. Now this is, again, I'm reiterating the direction of the coilover. You want to make sure that that side with the little washer bushing thing, the longer side is facing the, the rear. Um, that's pretty much the only way it'll work, but uh, just want to make sure that people understand that and get it on the right way. And then it's just a matter of lowering the car and everything once all well, that's back installed, everything torqued up, put the wheels back on, you know, make sure everything's clamped down good, and it should look pretty good. I think the next shot is of the finished product here. Yeah, so. This is the car um, as it sits after the coilover is installed. Considerably lower in the front and rear. I could have went a little bit lower in the rear, but 
I'm I'm okay with it. I hit a few bugs the night before doing some test runs with it. <laughs> this was the next day. So again, overall pretty happy. The uh, sticker on the top is regarding Far Cry 5, a video game, but uh, yeah, so feel free to ask any questions. Instagram is at Walper Style. I also have a lot of photography on Walper Photo Archives on Facebook. Feel free to check it out. Um, subscribe if you want to, and uh, make sure to be safe.